Hello, welcome to the June edition to our virtual kids craft corner. Today, we're going to be learning about stained glass and making our own sun catchers. Let's get started. Sun catchers are small colored decorations that you hang up in a window and when the sunlight passes through them, it comes out the other side as colors seen in the sun catcher's design. They have been around for a long time and are believed to have been first made by the Native Americans that lived in the Southwest. Today though, we associate them more with the stained glass images that we see in windows of churches and homes. Stained glass has been around for thousands of years. In fact, you can follow its history all the way back to 2000 BC and its earliest known works were from Alexandria, Egypt. In the first century AD, the Romans started using stained glass in their windows. In 686 AD, St. Paul's Monastery was founded in Jaro, England, and it is one of the oldest known examples of multiple pieces of colored glass used in its windows. By the Middle Ages, the popularity of stained glass windows had risen and it could be found in many of the Catholic churches across Europe. Stained glass windows were an important tool for churches, especially during medieval times. Back then, most people did not know how to read, making it very difficult for them to learn stories from the Bible. So churches would utilize stained glass windows to tell biblical stories. It didn't stop there though. The colors when crafting the stained glass windows had meanings to attach to all the different colors. For example, blue symbolized the sky, heaven, and serenity. Violet or purple represented truth, love, passion, suffering. It was also the color of royalty. Green symbolized grass, nature, growth, and rebirth. White symbolized innocence and purity. And yellow symbolized divinity, power, and glory. And it also is a color of the halos for all of the saints. Going into the 20th century, it was still popular to use stained glass windows to decorate churches, including churches right here in Rogers. In 1906, the first Baptist church was built in this very location, with all of the windows of the building being stained glass. The shape and arrangement of the windows for the church were designed by the church's architect, A.O. Clark. Unfortunately, the church burned down in 1968, and what happened to the stained glass windows is still unknown. Another church in Rogers with stained glass windows is the First United Methodist Church, also designed by A.O. Clark. It is located on the corner of South 3rd and Elm Street. The windows, which are a point of pride for the church, were installed when the church was built in 1908. They were designed and installed by Thomas E. Gatey and were made by the Ford Brothers Glass Company from Minneapolis, Minnesota. In 1979, the First United Methodist Church went through a sanctuary update and renovation program. During this program, Lexan window coverings were installed on the back of each window to ensure their protection. Part of the Rogers Historical Museum's collections is this stained glass panel from the First Presbyterian Church. This panel was located on the second floor of the church. It was installed in 1914 and removed in 1994. We also have pieces from the rosette window from the Methodist Church North. Both the First Presbyterian Church and the Methodist Church North were designed by A.O. Clark. Churches aren't the only buildings to have stained glass windows. It was popular in Victorian homes as well and was often used. Not every home could afford stained glass windows though, so those that could not afford it would use transparent colored paper in their windows and that it would give the same effect as a stained glass. Architect Frank Lloyd Wright incorporated stained glass into his designs that were part of his Prairie School movement of architecture and design. In these buildings, he would create ribbons of uninterrupted glass casement windows and doors. He considered them an integral part of his design for a building, and each one was unique to the building they were created for. Now that we've learned about stained glass windows, let's get to work in making our own sun catchers. All right, we're gonna get started. So we need to make sure we have all of our supplies. We need two pieces of circle contact paper with this shiny side down and one shiny side up. 
We also need to make sure we have our yarn. We have our tissue paper that are in squares but I've already cut mine out into some smaller shapes. And so to s we're going to start with taking the back off of the contact paper so that the sticky side is facing up. And we can use our scissors to kind of make sure our fingers don't stick too much to it. So with stained glass, we use them to tell stories. Today, I'm going to be telling you a story about my initials. So I'm going to make my initials out of it. So I have them all cut up, and the strips are just going to be laid out onto the contact paper. We need to make sure that we do not also cover up the holes with the tissue paper. I'm just going to lay all of my little strips down here. And again, you can use your scissors to help make sure that your fingers do not stick to the contact paper. All right, now that we have all of the tissue paper that I want to put on there. We're going to use the other piece of contact paper and we're going to lay it on top. Now you need to make sure that you have all of the circles lined up perfectly and it can be kind of hard because the contact paper will stick to itself very easily. So you need to make sure that you line them up. You might also have an adult help you line them up. I'm just going to lay them on top and smooth it out. Now we're going to take our piece of yarn and I put a piece of tape on the end of it to kind of help you go through all of the holes. And now we're just going to go and weave it in and out through all of the holes. Sometimes you have to pull a little bit through just so you have enough. And you want to make sure that you go and have the yarn go through every single hole so that it will finish it off and make sure it doesn't fall apart. And we're almost done now. All right, last one. And now that we're done, we are going to tie it at the end. And you're gonna make sure next to make the little hanger to hang it up with. So we'll just tie the little loop at the top. And we have a little bit of extra yarn, but that's okay. We can just cut that off if you want. And now we are all done. Just cut that off there. And we have our finished sun catcher. Thank you for joining us today as we learned about stained glass and crafted our own sun catchers. Stay safe and we hope to see you at the museum soon. Bye!